Who remembers the BJ and Bill show all those years ago on WOLZ? Well, many have said they missed the show, and guess what? They're back! Welcome to the BJ and Bill podcast! Welcome to BJ and Bill, the podcast, a part of the podcast playground network. We ask you to review. Give us that five-star review. Oh, if you enjoy this show at all, five stars, we'll, we'll kiss you, we'll hug you. We will do, well, I don't know, we'll do whatever you want us to do. What? But, <laughs> what? Okay, I'm over begging. I'm sorry. Yes, you are. Yes, you're a little over begging. Okay, okay give us a four star review if you have to. Well, no, I still want the five star review, <laughs> but I'm not making I'm not making any promises to come over and like wash your car or anything like that. If I if you do, so you know, maybe I'll I'll, I'll well if you got a rider, I'll come mow your yard. Oh, okay, there you go. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> but I only if you, only if you have a rider. I'm not working in the yard in this heat. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I am not doing it. Uh, subscribe wherever you get his Apple Spotify, you know, wherever you do your potting, my friends. And yes, follow yeah. us on Facebook, BJ and Bill, the podcast. Welcome to episode 98. 98. Awesome. 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 So you know, one of my bands yeah. as my daughter was growing up, you know, going to see all those boy bands. Right. 98 degrees. Oh, the that's right, 98 degrees. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about those. I was thinking, you know, Boys in the Hood or, you know, Backstreet Boys or O Town Boy, whatever, whatever. Don't forget NSYNC. Don't forget NSYNC. Sorry, sorry, Jerry Fatone. Wherever you I are. have been to so, more NSYNC concerts than most teenagers. Because they're still in Orlando and they're still hanging out at Disney World. Is that why or what? Well, no, because back when they were, you know, in their heyday, when they were very popular. My right. daughter was right at that boy band age, you know, where gotcha. I love the boy bands. Of course. And that was her favorite. Okay. And with dad, you know, of course we worked at an oldie station and that's sure. pretty much in the instinct days. Yes. But we had connections with top 40 friends in the building. Of course we did. And so I did, you know, go over and beg and plead like I just did for a five-star review. <laughs> And I, I got a few tickets thrown at me every now and again. Cool. Very cool. And of course, I was the country music director, which still means I had somewhat of a, you know, input with, you know, the folks in the major, you know, labels. And sure. So, you know, I, I, there, there was different folks that I could beg and plead with that would throw the old man a couple tickets to see NSYNC. And I'd take my daughter and be a hero. And as I said in past, podcast i enjoy the concerts just as much as she did because she would get all dolled up and it was mostly moms that took their daughters to the concerts yes yes i remember that i remember that well so yeah it's dolled up moms <laughs> in exactly the right age group how about that <laughs> yes so good people, for you dad there's a madness to my mine method method there's a method to your madness yeah that's it okay yes. yeah that's it. it but we understood we understood what you were saying so there but you go i, I yes, was still that would, that would be yeah but i still enjoyed bringing you know joy to my daughter of course good for you dad good and for you so. like i said i don't i don't know it's just it's too long ago I mean, you know i'm getting old i can't remember things but I, it's it's more in sync concerts than i can remember let's just say that right that's, and that's okay. That's okay. Good for you. <laughs> Episode 98. Holy cow. I was thinking maybe for like 100, we should probably do it on video and put it on YouTube as well. I mean, that's like the least we can do. Yeah, I that would thinking, work. Yeah, I think that would be cool. I think People that would could actually, well, I'm just going to speak for myself here. I'm not going to speak for Bill Stevens, but people can see how old and decrepit BJ Odom looks. Oh, after I'm, episode 100 <laughs> i'm right there with you i'm right there with you i'll at least have to get a haircut or something because i'm looking at my hairs here and i'm like holy cow i'm starting to look a little scruffy I, here i don't even know if i want to get haircuts because you can see it's just it's, there's it's, not it's, much there yeah. and not a whole and as i get older that little that stuff on the top just gets thinner and thinner and, and thinner. thinner i am i am blessed to still have a, a lot of it but it's lots and lots of gray and right now looking like something the cat dragged in so it's okay but anyway, that's we, we've got two weeks to go for that, so we will keep that in mind and and 
you know, at very least do the live or do the the show on the what you call it on on YouTube for the video as well. So there you go. All right. So, so what else is going up? on in your world? It has been so beastly hot, and I know it has been for you too because you just live down the road. Um, I have done very little. I mean, I I I I did go and visit um a lady friend at Daytona Beach on uh what's today? Today's Monday on Saturday. Went and visited a new lady friend at Daytona Beach. Had a fun time there. Um, and but that was just for the day. And then yeah, last week played a little pickleball in the evenings. We've changed my senior citizens group that I'm in here in Gainesville. We ch- we finally got smart enough to change from playing during the day, which was what are you nuts, to playing in the evening when the sun's starting to go down. And so it was a little better. So, but other than that. I haven't left the house a whole heck of a lot. <laughs> Just now in our neighborhood, I, I I know they would play at night a lot of times, and you would right. see people in that down there in the afternoon. But I don't know. We haven't been there in the last few weeks because you know, obviously, we were gone, and yeah, you know, and then you know, we were gone. We were first we went to Fort Myers for a few days, then we went uh, to St. Augustine for a few days, which that was an amazing time. I'm, we're gonna we're gonna hear more about that in a minute. Yes, for sure. And and so I don't know if they're playing. You know, like it seems like I haven't been to the you know the clubhouse a lot. Right. In the last you know maybe three or four weeks, but when I do go, I haven't seen people like I used to playing mm. pickleball as much. So I do think the heat is probably they're going. Eh, I don't think I'm going to do this. Right. Yeah. It's it's ridiculous ridiculously hot and i'm not gonna blame global warming or anything like that it's summer it's florida it's supposed to be hot so no politics it's just hot out there and it's just you know bleh, no thank you now so. one thing that uh, here's i mean I, I how do i say this i don't know i like being you know in the orlando area right lots to do lots to see i, right. I still miss southwest florida my son is down there, and I think that's really what I I miss about the area because I don't miss the beaches. I'm not a big beach person. Me neither. I do like to, you know, set out by the beach, you know, in an air conditioned, yeah, yes. uh, in an air conditioned, you know, chair. Right. Watching, Hotel room overlooking the beach. Watching the waves come in. That that is a highlight in my life. But as far as the beach itself, getting sand in my butt and things like that, <laughs> I'm not that bond of the beach. Right. So I do, but in central Florida, you get a lot colder than Southwest Florida in the winter time. Okay. And a lot hotter than Southwest Florida in the summertime because you're in the center of the state and you don't get that sea and Gulf breeze that kind of either warms you up in the winter time or cools you down. And so I would say as far as being in central Florida, that is my biggest don't like it. Okay. Okay. I hear you. I, and I, I can hey, even handle I, that because I don't mind the heat. I, that's kind of why I moved to Florida. Sure. You know, I, I moved here over 40 years ago. The main reason was I hated wintertime. Didn't want to, you know, scoop snow yep. anymore. Yep. And so I, I don't mind the heat and I don't complain because that's why I came to Florida. Right. I get it. But I didn't I'm, come I'm to the same Florida. Way. I, really... I, I didn't come to Florida to live in central Florida and freeze my ass off during the winter. Oh, you don't freeze your oh come on, grandpa. It's not that cold. Yes, it's it is. It's not that cold. Okay. <laughs> I don't think so, but I mean, I understand. And and look, look, I mean, if you were watching the sh- if you were watching it on video now, which you can't, thankfully, you'd be seeing, you know, Bill Stevens wearing his hoodie while he's sitting here at the desk. So it and I never thought it would come to this. I never thought here we are again talking as two old men. I never thought because I used to go when I had my little computer business or whatever, you know, while I was in Fort Myers and I did the radio thing, I also had oh, the little I hear computer this thing coming. on the side. I know. And I would visit older clients, and I'm talking <laughs> about clients who are now our age, you know, 60s and 70s, and their houses were always 
like a greenhouse, like like warm and stuffy. And I'd be trying to work on their computer while I'm sweating like a dog. And I'm like, holy cow, is this what happens when you get old? And of course, the answer is a resounding yes. Yes, Bill. This is what happens when you get old. You like things a little bit warmer. So I haven't, I haven't made the leap just yet. I still keep the air conditioning set to about eh, 71, 72, whatever. But I wear my sweater during the day around the house. So what am I crazy? What am I? I don't know. I don't know. Is that what you heard that coming, right? Of course you did. Yes, yeah. I did. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I mean, I, I don't want to say you're lucky because I don't I, I would not say that if this was the case and I did not have a wife. But in a way, I will say you're kind of lucky that you don't because my wife is I mean, she's, you know, I guess I should say I have a young, young, hot wife still. Well, she's younger an, than you. Instead of an old, you know, woman like, you know, you or I. <laughs> but um, but she still has what they call in the woman world. Hot flashes. Still. And when she gets these hot flashes, hot she flashes. likes to bury the air conditioner. And me as an old man going, oh, my You're... God, it's so freaking cold in here. <laughs> ah. That's I. I So so you're I mean, and I'm not a doctor and I do not play one on TV, but I would have thought she would have been done with the hot flashes by now. But apparently so not. Would I. Right. Right. OK, well, I can't, I'm not going to stick my head, you know, into that guillotine anytime <laughs> soon and start talking about something that I have no idea how it works. None at all. So, yeah. OK. But she'll just be sitting on the couch and go, oh, my God, I'm so hot. And I'm going, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> PJ's there wearing his parka. He's got his mittens on. <laughs> you know, and she like, she around the house, you know, when it's just her and I. and Right. It's not, you know, going out, you know. She's like in a in a tank top usually in shorts and right. I'm in jeans and usually a long, long sleeve shirt and I'm still going holy crap. Not, what do you mean it's hot in here? <laughs> it's not like I can say take off more clothes because she's you know pretty much in a tank top and shorts right. anyway. Well, I, but still, taking off clothes is always a good option <laughs> for the woman in your life. I don't want to get in trouble with that either, but there we go. So, all right, all right. So, this is this is the um, this is the old age thing we laughed about when we were young and said, "Oh, that's you guys are funny. You guys, <laughs> yeah, look at how you live. Yeah, it's funny." Here we are. We're doing it. We're absolutely doing it. So, I get it. Yeah. Well, you know, let's 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 reverse a little bit to an earlier conversation we had. So, I heard you say this word that you've used a few other times, lady friend. Mm -hmm. So is this the first time that you got together with this particular lady friend? No, this is the second, second time, second time. Okay. She's, it's yeah. a bit of a drive. Like I said, it's Daytona. So it's, it's a bit of a drive, but it's okay. I mean, it's not, it's an easy drive across, you know, go to Ocala, go East, get to I-95, go one exit South. Um, oh, that's not bad. So then. is it? What's that? That's not bad then. No, no, no. Um. So yes, this is the. Um, I don't. I I hate to say it that way. I, I hate to say like this is the latest or the newest or the whatever because it sounds like because it sounds like I have a revolving door for for lady friends and it, I'm not like that. I'm not really, but yes, this is s someone new that I met online and. Uh, Interesting lady. Interesting lady. We're having a fun time together. So, now, so far, so good. I'll let please, you know. Please tell me you're not taking her to sci-fi movies and things like that. Please, please say, you know, you ask her, you know, what she wanted to do. Right. And, and, and maybe, maybe, you know, learn from your past mistakes, which I've tried to guide you through <laughs> and, and you've taken her to a chick flick. Right. Well, so far, so far, no movies, just out to lunch a couple of times and, uh, not this time, but last time we went uh, to the beach, uh, which again was beastly hot. But we just um, over by Daytona there. There's a lighthouse at Haunts Inlet, 
very nice, very pretty old place, you know, and so we wandered around there for a while. And yeah, so no movies yet. I'll let you know. I don't know if she's the movie type or not. Anyway, I, I'm not sure. We're we're it's it's just now kind of getting to the, you know, figuring out what works, what doesn't, what what we like, what we don't like. Yeah, okay. She does she does play pickleball, however. So that is oh. a definite positive. Yes. She is lives in a lives in a community over there that has a really nice, you know, probably like yours, a really nice clubhouse with a couple of pools and a hot tub and a workout room and, you know, big ballroom kind of a thing. Uh, hers is a little more old school than yours and the ones that I've seen. Her, you know, they they built it when they had a few dollars, so it's a really nice, you know, it has a golf course and, and all of that and pickleball courts. So anyway, looking forward to eventually doing that. Who knows? So doing a little pickleballing with her. Say what? Doing a little pickleballing with her. Kinda sorta, yeah. Kinda sorta. Yeah. You know, you could <laughs> never mind. I was gonna... Yeah, there's a lot of ways that could go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bill, that's a nice pickleball you have there. Yeah, thanks. Here, let me toss it over. How do you <laughs> like that? Oh, I like that. Let me toss it back. Oh, it ain't hot. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right, oh, all right. No, I've lost my pickleball. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all good, all good. So, thanks to thanks to the thousands and thousands who have written in and you know worried about Bill's relationship life. That would be zero. Zero people have done that, but it's okay. Thank you anyway <laughs> for your kind thoughts and your whatever. So, thoughts and prayers, as they say. So, now did you? Now, were you like me? <laughs> I should just be, I should just get out of this while I can. But I probably, I, but I, I suspect, as uh, always, you will dig the hole even deeper. So yeah, go ahead. Because inquis inquisitive minds want to know. I hear you. So you said you went to the beach. We did, now, yes. When BJ goes to the beach, because I always get these, you know, these wonderful skin cancers. Oh, yeah. So, so I'm wearing like, you know, long sleeve hoodie, you know, I mean, it's, it's like a fishing one. It's like thin. So it does right. breathe a little bit. Right. And, you know, like usually I might wear shorts, but usually hell I'll wear long pants to the beach too. So now you two went to the beach. Right. What was the, what was the attire for the day? It was much more regular beachy attire. Now I'm not going to, we didn't really go down like to the water and splash around or anything like that. But like I said, we went to this Ponce Inlet, which has a park and a national lighthouse, you know, whatever historic marker. But we, so we did that. But to answer your question, the attire for the day was, you know, just Saturday casual. It's not, we didn't really plan on going to the beach. We just ended up there. So that was that. No, I'm not, I'm not wrapped up like, you know, like a, like a mummy the way BJ Odom is when he goes to the beach. I've seen those pictures. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. So So there was no suntan I, rubbing is what you're saying. There was no suntan oil rubbing is what you are you are correct in that assumption. Yes. So Okay. I, I sorry just, to disappoint. I was just envisioning things in my mind. I'm sorry, you know. I know you were. I know <laughs> you were and I'm sorry to have to tell you that not yeah, no not not at this point. So Because stay I, tuned. Because I am that dirty old man, you know that. So that's, I know, you know what, why I know my that. mind goes there. You know, I but, totally hey, get that. Another thing we talked about when we were younger: that dirty old man out there. Well, although I'm not the dirty old man that likes to, you know, grab and do things like that. Yeah, no, I'm not that dirty old man. Because there are those dirty old men too. That old man. Yeah. Oh, it's like, it's like, you end up. You, I was, you, yeah. I was a waitress, and then all of a sudden, I went to take his yeah. order, and he like. Right his hand, right on my yeah. my buttocks. No, I'm not that dirty old man, but yeah, the, <laughs> those kinds of dirty old men that either end up in politics or in prison. So yeah, <laughs> it's one or the other. It's, I don't know, but hey. no, I get it. Good for you. Good for you that you are at least not that guy. Yeah, I, I, I'm 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 a respectful dirty old man. I keep it all to myself. Okay, I, unless that's I'm doing a, a podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially now. Especially now. So good, good for you. And, you know, especially probably the wife is within hearing distance or at least yeah. she'll hear the podcast and we don't want to, we don't want to get you into any more 
trouble than you usually do for yourself. So yeah. Actually, I, I'm feeling pretty good about my relationship right now. And my, you know, I every once in a while I have promoted my new podcast here on the BJ and Bill, the podcast. Yes. But uh I do this uh gift of life, the organ transplant podcast. And this week you, we talked you, about you. caregivers. And, and you texted me that. Wait, you texted me that that you talked to a caregiver named susan and i went oh wait and it literally <laughs> took me 24 hours to, th to figure that out you talked to your wife on the podcast yes awesome now awesome. listen listen to this of course this doesn't yes. get on the podcast it got you know edited but i talked okay. about this is the first time i've really had you on like i did radio for over 40 years while we've been married right. But this is the right. first time I ever had you on the air as a guest and interviewed you, and she corrected me. I had her on really? right after she had Amanda, the, our, our our daughter. Wow! And I didn't and I didn't remember that. And guess what? That got me in a little trouble. I'll bet it did. And that would have been that would have been before Oldies ninety five. Right? Oh yeah, that would have been yeah, well before. Right, because I don't remember. I don't remember her being on the show with us. Yeah. I remember I remember my ex being on the show with us a couple of times because we would do the show the day after Thanksgiving on Black Friday. And she was a big fan of going out shopping at like six in the morning on Black Friday. So she would call in and give us like traffic reports or something. So I shout out to Paula there. I remember that. So cool. Yeah. I do remember. Wow, that's interesting. You had her on when you had your daughter. Interesting. Yeah. So and then I had her, you know, on the podcast talking about being a, a great caregiver. Caregiver. And when it was any, over with, any, and, and, any, and any I gotta admit, in in and you know, I we weren't looking at each other directly because we were we only have I only have I have two mics, but only one that fits into this new fancy board that I have. And so we had to use the same mic. So we kind of sat next to each other. Mm -hmm. But I kind of, you know, a couple times during the interview, I teared up. And she told me it was very emotional for her also to, you know, awesome. talk about some of that stuff. I think it'll turn out pretty decent. I think just the fact that she's my wife and so many people, you know, you know, know of, you know, we've talked about her enough that and know her too. They'll think that it's interesting. I'm sure it will be. I'm sure it will be because there's now we're going to get the story from the other side of it. Cause right. we know we've, we've known and we've heard your story many, not, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but we've heard your story for years and years and it's always cool and interesting, but we've never got it from the caregiver side of yes. it. So now it's her turn to tell us what a lousy patient you are. <laughs> Just she saying. Was, she was, she was much more respectful on an interview that she would be <laughs> never <laughs> he's always respectful of course but of now course. i do remember uh having my i don't know if you remember this or not but you know the bj and bill show it always started very very early in the morning oh yeah and there was a couple times like when there was like heavy snow and the weather was really cold i don't know if you remember these days or not but i say hey my ex-wife is in Indiana, and I, some, I had her number for a few years. I have no oh. idea what it is now. But I would give her a call, like, at 6.15 in the morning to ask her how the weather was there. Of course, she'd be sleeping in a dead sleep and answer the phone and probably talk to us for about 10 seconds. And then we'd hear, click, click. But it was always, it was always funny. It was. <laughs> they used to me. I was I was just thinking as you were saying that. I mean, what are you what are you talking about? Heavy snow? Oh, back in Indiana? Yeah, you yeah. bet it was. Yeah, yeah we would always call. I would always say, "Oh, sure. let's see what the weather is." And you know, and I'd always know it's one of those days. And I'd you know say, "Hey, you know, we have a high today, of probably seventy degrees. Let's check in with my ex. Hey, you're on the air with us. Uh, it's like going to be uh, seventy eight here today. What's the weather there?" Like, <laughs> I think all we ever got on was the hello. I yeah, think that's probably. all the farther we got. And finally, after about three times that happened, I gave up. Yeah. It was, I knew she wasn't going to talk to me. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good thing she never like cussed you out or something like that. I'm sure she <laughs> sure she did that in private times, but yeah, not on the not on the air. So she yeah. had that she had that had that 
a, a amount of knowledge to know you don't you, you can't well, swallow you're on the radio. she never was an on-air person right but she did traffic oh at oh, okay. uh, a radio station that i worked at while we oh, were okay. married so she knew okay cool yeah uh, I never will forget this. This is a funny story. Well, I'm telling funny stories. Go for it. Bill goes, oh, no, another one of his stupid funny stories. <laughs> but, okay, I'm working at the radio station. She's like does traffic, and she's the lady at the front desk. Small market radio station. Very few people in the building. Well, you know, back in the day where you would use tape programs on the weekends, you, it would come on big reels, you know? So. Oh, yeah. When the UPS guy would deliver the reels, he would, you know, check in at the front desk and then he would just walk back to the studio and he knew where they went. Right. So she's out at the front desk and he comes in one day and he goes, man, that girl out front, I literally like to bang the hell out of that. <laughs> and you got to tell him? I got to tell him. Well, well I do way. every night. That's my wife. Oh, my God. The guy, like, turned about 10 shades of red, got out of there about as fast as he possibly could. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> a lot of ways to talk about that. I'm not sure any of them are appropriate for our family-friendly show. Maybe but, that's why we got divorced. Maybe he finally got lucky, and she said, huh, I'm going with the UPS I'm guy. Going with the UPS guy. Wow. Okay. He's... A lot hotter than some dorky DJ. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I hadn't thought of that. Well, he didn't have good legs. I remember in the summertime, he wore those of course. shorts, you know, every time he came. Of course. Back. And I always had my long pants on even back then. So. Those guys are running all the time. I mean, Damn. you know, we got, we got UPS guys here in the apartments. They're like, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know how they do that job. I do not know. Cause those trucks are not air conditioned. I don't think they're air conditioned. They're driving around with the doors and the windows open all the time. And it's like, you know, brown uniform, brown in the sunshine, in the hot. And I'm like, oh, man, you guys deserve yeah, at least, I don't know, whatever they're paying you. It's not enough. So yeah. Yeah, at least the Amazon guy, he gets to, you know, wear a light blue outfit. And I'm and I and when I see him driving. Well, and again, like I'm saying, like the, the, those trucks are in my, in my complex. I'm sure it's the same in any apartment complex anywhere on planet earth that the UPS truck, the Amazon truck, and sometimes the FedEx truck, but the, the first two Amazon UPS at least once a day, constantly, every day, every day, seven days a week. And they're and so fast they're because like they can be at your door. Yep. Because we have a ring camera, so whenever the we have it set up, so you know, obviously, mm -hmm. when the UPS guy or anybody steps into our front lanai, mm -hmm. or front porch, whatever you want to call it, wherever you're from, as soon as he steps in, the thing goes, we get like a little alarm, so we know someone is at the door. Sure. And by the time I will, you know, I am old, I am slow, but by the time I get off my hiney, right, get to the door to open it up. He's done taking his picture, and the truck is, like, going down the road. They are quick little boogers. Does your Alexa does your Alexa tell you when you have a package delivered? No. Oh, really? No? I, I guess oh, we could set that up. Talking about me. Alexa, stop. What? See, see I, I don't have her give me, you know. Oh, okay. So mine, literally, I from where I'm sitting right here, and I know you can't see me on video, but from where I'm sitting... I can I can turn to my left and I can see out my kitchen window and I can see out my front lanai my my uh, French doors to the parking lot out there so I can see the Amazon truck roll up and stop and then like you said it's about fifteen seconds for the young man or woman to to jump out drop the package at the door take the picture take off literally before the truck is rolling away. Amazon, uh, you know, Alexa is going, you know, new notification from Amazon shopping. A package for Bill has been delivered. I'm like, yeah, no kidding. I, it's like, wow. So, yeah, it must, yeah, our, it, our, he must have some our, thing. Yeah, our young lady will like kind of like, that's the like, it will let us know that. And that is because it's connected to the ring also. Okay. Yeah. So it's like a, like a warning that someone has entered our, yes. yeah. our you know, our front porch sure so we'll hear that but right. we, yeah we told her we didn't because she said would you like for me to give you updates and give you you know we said no just 
Alexa, just shut up. <laughs> just, you know, we, I, I've got, see this lady over here? She's my wife. I hear from her enough. I don't need another one in the house. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I, I do like her a lot better, though, because I can talk back to her. Yes, Alexa. you can tell her to, you can literally tell her to shut up and shut up. And I don't have to worry about a pan in the side of the head, nothing like that. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, there you go. So it was, yeah, okay, fine. So, so anyway, yeah, she that's doesn't our... give us. She doesn't give us notifications, but you go when someone enters our front Right, porch. right, the ring door. And that can be but... anybody. I mean, it doesn't have to be oh, the sure. Amazon guy. Oh, it sure. Can be, you know, it can be the neighbor, the salesperson. Sure. Well, that's anything. the whole idea. That's the yeah. whole idea. And then do you have it on your phone where you can see who it is on the yeah. phone or whatever? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's super cool. That is super cool. So And then also would... that we yeah, we really don't do it, but you know, like someone can like come to the door and we can be in St. Augustine. Right. And I can go, I ah, just leave it there, or you know, hey, right. uh, we haven't got time to talk to you, you know, get get the hell off my porch. You know, I, you know, I basically, and we can communicate and that we right. can hear them. They can hear us. If, right. You know, we set it up. I mean, got to, they yeah. don't hear us talking if we don't say, you know, mean to talk to them, but our friend, uh, our friend, Vicki Wagner has that at her cabin up in Blue Ridge. They have one in the front, a camera in the front in the back in the side by the garage. They have like four different cameras. <clears throat> and when I do my dog and dog and cabin sitting, I'll download the app to my phone so that I can see what's, you know, cause I'm the only guy there. So while I'm out shopping or walking or whatever, I can see if anything happens there. And it'll be like, like a week later or two weeks later, this happened this time, like two weeks later, I'll be at home right here. And the little the ring doorbell will start to go off in the evening and I'm, it'll start to notify me. And I'm like, what the hell is that? Oh yeah. I never took the app. And there's a deer walking by her back porch or something <laughs> like that. And it's like, okay, that's very cool, but I don't need to know what's going on in Blue Ridge, Georgia just now. So we're going to delete the app until the next time. Thank yes. you. Some of those ring cameras have really good night vision. Yeah. She has sent me video of a bear, of a bear in the front yard by the garage taken by the ring camera. I'm like, does that happen a lot? She goes, not really, no, but he happened to, you know, he or she, Mama Bear, I don't know, happened to wander by and the camera cutter. So anyway, never mind. All right. Yeah, we, I wish we had a few more, but we have three here right now. Three? Three? You need more? Well, like you said, with them, they have one that, you know, the right. back side. Well, they're on a, they're on, a, they're on two acres of property in the mountains. They're not like in a gated community. <laughs> I just like to know what's going on around my house. I understand. Okay. All right. All right. Spy versus spy. We'll check on more of that. So anyway, look at that. We've already come halfway. Let's take a quick break. Go refill your coffee. Make your bathroom stop. Do whatever you need to do. We will be right back. Welcome back. I'm Bill Stevens. That's BJ Odom. This is BJ and Bill, the podcast. Which, uh, by the way, if you're curious or would ever like to contribute or post a picture or whatever, head over to our Facebook page. Just do a search for BJ and Bill podcast on Facebook. And while you're at it, stop by wherever you get your podcasts, Apple, Spotify, uh, uh, YouTube music. We're on YouTube music. I, don't, I think I've mentioned that in the past, but we're we're like we're like moss. We're everywhere. We just grow everywhere. So leave We're us that five-star review. We appreciate now. it. Podbean. That's right. Which is one of the original OG podcasting directories. Podbean. We're everywhere. We're everywhere. So that's cool. I know I've subscribed to us on Apple Podcasts. If you have an iPhone or an iPad, that's probably the easiest thing. You just find our show and then you don't subscribe anymore on Apple. You follow you follow oh, okay. the podcast and it will download the show to your phone every time there's a new episode, which just so happens to be every Wednesday morning at like 5 a.m. or something like that. That's when the new ones hit the are dropped, right? You have to say dropped. Isn't that the fancy word? Yeah, yeah. that's the hell. new podcast drops every Wednesday morning at 5 a.m. So when does and yours I, when does the gift of life drop? Tuesday, Tuesday. OK, so when you wake up Tuesday mornings, I, I usually have it 
you know, we, you can set what time it drops. So I usually drop it like three or four o'clock in the morning. So when anybody wakes up, it's their Tuesday morning, no matter, cool. unless cool. you wake up maybe at three in the morning, you may yeah. miss it by an hour and have oh, to wait. Oh, darn. Time. I'll remember that the next time I wake up at 3 a.m. on a Tuesday morning, which is, oh, wait, never. So, <laughs> so speaking of posting photos, I was so impressed that you and your wife, Susan, actually got a selfie with Bucky. Oh, yeah, that was I'm, great. I'm impressed. I am. I got to tell you, I'm impressed. So there you go. And, you know, that is our second our, we got one like uh, last, oh, I think cool. in, last year with Bucky. Also, we walked into one of the Bucky's and Bucky was running around. And we go, oh, I gotta, go. I gotta get a picture. Come on, it's Bucky. It's Bucky. So this latest, this latest one was in uh, the Daytona one, right? Uh, yes. Right on your way to your on on your way to your beach. And I want to hear about the beach vacation. We want to hear about that. But so Bucky's it. So did he like did he like force some Bucky's nuggets on you or whatever, or did you just was he nice about it? No, he would he would just kind of like stand in the you know in a in an area and people would come right. up and take pictures and you know right. kind of like Disney when they have their characters out there was a person right. that was like monitoring Bucky and sure. standing next to Bucky and of course if you handed sure. him your cell phone he would take a picture of you know you yeah. with Bucky awesome. and you know, I guess maybe if kids were getting too annoying he would chase I don't know what his exact title or duty was He's and you know Bucky like you, like you mentioned when you went into Bucky's there was a whole list of things for you to do right and and, and what the wages were per hour for each one oh sure one. the jobs yeah yeah i did not see anywhere on there what bucky gets paid for you know being bucky i would hope it would be a pretty good pretty good salary for <laughs> cuz that's got to be a tough again you know wearing that big heavy suit there at least you're in the air conditioned store yeah not wondering you know you're not outside pumping gas <laughs> but yeah that's good for him so cool cool so i, so, I did have my first negative and I, and I know it's because i'm getting older oh my boy. stomach is just not the same as it used to be tell me about it you know i can my i can i can you know my stomach can get all messed up with just I don't know by eating the wrong anything. I understand. I, this oh, I past had, week, I've kind of been in that boat, so I understand. I feel your pain, but anyway, what at Bucky's? I, you had, I had a... my brisket sandwich. Oh, <sighs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It but then that good. night, really? Oh, yeah. You paid for it. I paid for it that night. Second I mean, I had a heartburn and tummy really? burn, and yeah, but it, it was worth it. <laughs> Well, like I said, I've now done both. I've done the brisket sandwich and the pulled pork, and I'm, I, I kind of like the pulled pork a little bit better. I got to admit, I got to admit. If, if if what happens when I eat the brisket happen and again, I think next time I go in, I'm going to try the pork. There you go. But you know, yeah. when we came home. We came straight home. We didn't stop at a Bucky's. Oh no. Yeah, I think I was Bucky'd out, and I like. I said, I know if I eat my favorite thing, my stomach's just going to be right. all screwed up again. And I got, you know, I'm somewhat back to normal now. Okay. So we yeah. didn't stop on the way back home. That's okay. That's all right. That's, I mean, and literally, remember I told you when I drive over to see my, my lady friend over at, at Daytona, it's like I drive across I-40, which is the little two lane that goes from Ocala all the way over to Daytona to, to I-95. Literally on that, tiny stretch of i-95 that's where the daytona buckies is so i passed the daytona buckies on my way to my friend's place so we'll definitely probably stop in there for pull pork someday yes <laughs> my wife was a little disappointed too of course we went on july the 7th right fourth of july was already over right because they had some really neat buckies t-shirts for the fourth of july and they were they were out sold out oh yeah so she was very very bummed and and we've talked about this in the past we have got to got to maybe we can do that for the 100th episode get somebody on from bucky's all right i'm 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 writing i'm literally writing that down right now to see if we can reach out to the bucky's pr department or whatever and see if we can have somebody on with us on the show at, to talk about the business cuz i to me I mean, and you've talked about it. I've talked about it. Every time you go to Bucky's, it's like, 
it's like Black Friday. You know, it's like it's just wall to wall people and 120, 140 gas pumps all full all the time. How is this company not making a billion dollars a day? I probably I is. I, they have to be. Again, to. July 7th is Sunday. Right. The end of the 4th of July weekend. Mm hmm. So we went in on a Sunday, I want to guess, maybe around 2.30, 3 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So really, if, if you're talking about lunch, that's an off time. That's not a time to be eating. The place you couldn't even walk in it. In fact, I think that's what saved me a little bit of money. <laughs> the fact that you couldn't navigate? Yeah, it was so busy. I think my wife even looked at me and said, let's get our food and get out of here. And I'm like, right. Oh. Right? I go, oh, that hard, was that okay. a heart attack right there? Okay. <laughs> I go, let's do that. Right. right. She's, it's just too busy in here. Well, and you mentioned lunchtime. I don't think that matters when you're traveling. I don't, you know, lunchtime is kind of a whenever we feel like stopping or wherever, whenever somebody in the car needs a bathroom stop or when we need gas or whatever, that's when lunchtime happens. So, my two Bucky stops, both the same one at Warner Robins, uh, Georgia, on the way up to Blue Ridge and back. And I couldn't tell you that now, wait a minute, I came back. That was a that was a Sunday. I'm pretty sure that was a Sunday, too. Might have been a Saturday. And probably by the time I got there, probably early afternoon, like you said, probably two o'clock. And when I on the drive south, it was it wasn't as bad going north on the drive south coming back wall to wall wall to wall people and like you said you get in get in get your food get the hell out of there and you know because i'm not a crowd person either but i mean lots of people are lots of people are it's so. like yeah my, i mean she did it she waited right. right but my wife also had to really <clears throat> You know, do what you do sometimes when you stop at a Bucky's. Make a pit Because they're all clean. Make a pit stop. So she said, oh, my God, look at this line. I go, well, you got to decide if you want to do it or not. She goes, right. I need to do it. And I go, you stand in line. I'll go pay for the food. There you go. There you go. So, so we got our food. She got in line. Right. No, wait. No, no. We, we No, I, I waited for her. And she finally got in line because... And then we got our food and got out of there. Cool. But she didn't shop. It was a miracle. <laughs> she didn't shop. It was like being touched by the Lord himself. You shall not shop today. <laughs> it was a true miracle, Bill. It was a true miracle. It was a true. true. Why are we doing the Irish thing? I don't, I don't know. know. But I but saw anyway. it. I saw it with my own eyes. It was a miracle. <laughs> All right. So the reason you were there was to travel out to St. Augustine for your little wedding anniversary getaway, whatever. And we haven't heard about that. And I want to hear how that went for you. So well, how'd that go? Where'd you stay? Stayed on the we, beach? Yeah, we stayed on the beach. We stayed at Guy Harvey's resort, which to me, it's not a resort. To me, it's the Lonnie Kai kind of redone. You know, right. Redone. redone right. The room... The room was okay. Not the view was spectacular. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. There you, you're paying for the view. Yes. Yeah. So you're paying for the view. Gotcha. The service was spectacular. They had all these paintings on the walls, which was marvelous. There was like a guy, Harvey, Miri, Miral, however you say that big Miral, word. Yeah. Yeah, mural yeah. in every room. Nice. So there's a big, you know, guy, Harvey, mural. They had, they had, listen to this, they had these little surfboards for sale and they had guy Harvey paintings, mm -hmm. thousand bucks a piece. Mm. Wow. Wow. Now, I don't know if that'd be an investment to buy one or not, but they had them probably had not. quite, I mean, they were hanging. I mean, they were different, you know, different. Yeah different paintings but i get it full-size surfboard i mean like a big big surfboard i wasn't like a you know i'm not a big server i'm not I'm either like, but i know what a, you know a really like if you was in hawaii or yeah. california yeah those are and then like kind long. of more of a i guess you call them a boogie board or something skim board something like yeah, that they're, yeah they're smaller right though that's what they were selling for a thousand dollars they were all they were all painted 
And there was like, you know, had to have been 20 of them on the wall. Wow. To choose wow. from. So anyway, you went, you stayed, had the yeah. beach, had the beach view for the for the weekend. Had a nice little, you know, we, we got the ocean front of with course. a balcony. Of course. So, you know, we sat out on the balcony and nice. I actually went out there one day and a swimming suit and no shirt. My oh my god, god. It was, it was the scariest thing that man could run into. You think a bear's scary, you know, on your little trip. That was much scarier than anybody seeing a damn bear, let me tell you. BJ Odom without a shirt. Little children were running for their lives. <laughs> mommy, mommy. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. And so then good. We, I'm glad. I'm happy to hear it. And then we went to, you know, the downtown area, you know, where all the shops and everything was. St. Augustine. And then that's at, uh, what is it? George or St. George or whatever George. street. Yes, it's like goes from one end to the other where, you know, yep. you can walk on the street and all the yep. shops. Yep. We parked on one end, walked all the way to the end. Then my wife wanted to walk over to the fort mm -hmm. to take some pictures. Mm -hmm. So she walked over to the fort. I stayed on a bench on the other side and you go for it, which I'm glad I did. And then we went back to the Columbia restaurant. Oh, and by the time we got there, because we were going to eat at a seafood restaurant that night. Right. But my wife was hungry. She said, let's, you know. Right. Let's, let's eat. And I agreed because I was just, I don't know if I could have made it to the car because it was hot. And I think I was ready to have a heat stroke. Yeah. And that food and the water and everything was just the perfect stop. We had a nice little meal. Columbia then, restaurant, the same as the one in Tampa? The old yep, in yep, Ybor? Yep. Same one. Best Cuban sandwich on planet Earth. That's what I had. I haven't. Oh, good. Oh, lovely. I, I haven't tried all the Cuban sandwiches yet. I'm I'm working my way through them, but that's right there. Right. And she, there. The only thing I didn't like about it, and I, I will tell you, maybe because I've been eating my Cuban sandwiches at the wrong places, it wasn't pressed. I like a Cuban sandwich that's pressed. Really? Yeah, it didn't seem to be pressed. I can't. I. I, I I'm dumbfounded because I always thought that's what makes, I mean, that's not what makes it a Cuban sandwich. It's the ham and the turkey and the pickles and the mustard. But if it's not pressed, it's not a real Cuban sandwich. Come on. Come on. Well, maybe it was, but it wasn't like I like. Maybe it was. Yeah. Maybe, maybe they were in a hurry. They just kind of squished it a little bit. <laughs> maybe it was just, maybe we'll just lean on it a little bit here and then walk it out. Yeah. It was I still would. Good. And maybe, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. maybe it was because I only got the half of Cuban. And a salad. I, I, now my, now my, now I'm interested. Now I want to, next time, uh, I don't know if I'll ever go to the Columbia restaurant in St. Augustine, Florida or not, but if I do, damn it, it better be fully pressed and, yeah. and, and, and pressed and whatever that steamed or squished or grilled or whatever. Grilled, it's grilled. Yeah. So yeah, we went there, we spent a day there and it was perfect really in a way because we would usually get out of the, Get out of our our room like around 10 o'clock in the morning, 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. And every day we would be done with our little activity that we were doing. Right. By about four o'clock in the afternoon. And it just, we went downtown. Right. Got to our car. Rain starts. Rain started. Yep. yep. And then the next day we went on a boat ride, you know, like a little tour. Oh, cool. Went out. By the Gulf, of, it was like a, it, was, it wasn't a three hour tour. It was an hour and a half tour. Three hour tour. Yeah. If it would have been a three hour tour, I don't think we would have made it back because like right about an hour and a half, right when it was. And that's why we went on the early, we went at one o'clock. Right. Because I was going to take like the, uh, the three o'clock one or whatever. I, go, I don't know, man. I'm looking at the rain charge. It looks like it's going to, and we no more got back to our car after the little boat ride. Poured, Poured down rain. Poured down rain. So Welcome we had a good summer in Florida. Yeah, we had, we had, we had a good time and we meet and we, you know, miss the rain every time. Awesome. Well, good. I'm glad now, you I could have bought a $50, like, you know, like fishing shirt. I call them fishing shirts or the long sleeve. Yeah. You know, I've got one of those. Sure. You know, you don't get burned by they call them. The yeah. UV you got the SPF protection. in it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So I, I think I could have spent. Uh, over fifty dollars at Guy Harvey's to get one with a little, you know, picture of Guy Harvey. Oh, yeah. well, it wasn't actually a painting, but you know, it yeah. was 
one of his paintings, or I could have got one that said, you know, St. Augustine was kind of cool at the hoodie and everything uh, for uh, like $20, $19.99. Right. I got the 1999 shirt because I am a tight wad and I, am, I enjoy uh, it just as much. I got no, I got no issue with that. I got one of those long sleeve, you know, as, as sun protector shirts. I think it, I think it came, I think it's a Walmart brand. I think I probably paid nine ninety five for it. It works perfect. Thank you very much. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not, I don't need to wear anybody's logo or anything like that on my shirt. So I'm just not that guy. So, yeah, so you know what it was really weird? Cause we thought about maybe staying through Thursday, but we decided now nah, let's just stay through Wednesday. Right. And that was the perfect. It was, we even both kind of agreed. It was like the perfect getaway. Wasn't too long. Wasn't too short. Cool. Went downtown, went on the boat ride, did about everything we wanted. Cool. Perfect. Sunday through Wednesday, we're thinking about maybe going somewhere else. Maybe we'll do the same thing. I I really like the idea of going, especially for us people in Florida, us, us Florida residents, as we go to visit the touristy places in Florida, of doing it during the week and hopefully avoiding some of the big crowds. Because if you go to St. Augustine on the weekends, it's just, it's wall to wall. I mean, it's like, it's like Bucky's. Yeah, it's wall to wall. And I don't, I don't enjoy that. I don't enjoy that at all. Uh, you know, I mean, but, but St. Augustine is beautiful, wonderful, cool place to wander around and enjoy, but not with the crowd. So if you can go on a weekday, more power to you. Absolutely. Well, that's like my Disney tickets. Uh, the wife, right. because we, you know, right. we have the daughter and the daughter likes right. to go sometimes on the weekend. So my wife actually has a, a full week pass where she can go any day. I have the uh Weekend. monday through friday ticket okay so i can't go on saturday and sundays or holidays eh. but, but the you price know what? difference was substantial not really it was about oh. well i think i pay like 20 something a month and i think she pays like 30 something a month okay and that's for you know and what for basically except for holidays almost ain't i mean there's like spring break there's like christmas break both of us are like not allowed in, but you know, oh. you're, you're thinking like, you know, $22 a month and a right. regular Disney ticket costs you over a hundred dollars. It's right. It's well worth it. If I lived as close as you did, I would probably do that as did, so. Like you said, 25 bucks a month that gets you in on the weekdays. Anytime you want to go, I, I can see doing that. That's kind of cool. I mean, you know, just got nothing better to do. Just go down and wander around Disney for a while or, you know, now and is that, does that get you into any park or is it yeah. just. Yeah. Any, any of the parks. Park? Well, awesome. not the water parks, but the five. Yeah, no, I understand. Like Epcot. Epcot. Hollywood. Right. The regular. Animal Kingdom. Uh, yeah. Animal Magic Kingdom, Kingdom. Magic Kingdom. Cool. I think that's, I think there's only four. I think. Yeah, I think so. But still, I think that's. Again, I think that's a really cool, yeah, that's a really cool deal. And, and most times, like, if we go to one of their concerts at Epcot, we don't go till 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and then we'll watch one or two of the shows and go home. If we go earlier, like, you know, let's say we just want to go to the Magic Kingdom or something. Right. We'll probably go at, you know, 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning, and we'll be leaving by 3 or 4 in the afternoon. And because you can come back anytime, you're not, because you always have that, I, the few times I've been to Disney World, I mean, not a ton, but enough. You have that feeling. It's like, doggone it, I paid for that hundred, like you said, hundred dollar ticket. I got to do everything I can. I got to squeeze every minute into it. Absolutely right. So, so the last time you went, I mean, how is it still crowded or not? Because I, you know, you hear stories, and I haven't. It's, to me, it's it's. Yeah, I don't care what day you go, what time you go. It's still crowded. It's it's crowded. Yeah. You know, okay, maybe there might be a few, maybe there might be 2,000 people a day less than used to go, so they're making a little less money, but I don't think they're anything to worry about. I've been watching some of the videos on YouTube. Of course, you know, Disney gets into trouble with various political factions and stuff like that for their, you know, for their philosophies, shall we say. 
And I've seen a few of those videos where a guy will be at Disney World going, look, it's empty. There's nobody here. I'm like, really? Is it really? So, yeah. I yeah, I think they got one of those special cameras because <laughs> I have went different days, different times, different parks. Right. And I have never once said, oh, my God, this place There's is nobody. almost a ghost town. <laughs> There's nobody here. <laughs> Now, I remember after COVID one time, you know, when they first started opening again after COVID. Right. That was the time to go because then it was a ghost pretty town. much a ghost town. Right. Okay. Well. But, yeah, you now. Not so much. No more ghost town. Okay. And that's fine. Good for them. You know, I mean, it's still, love them or hate them, it's still kind of a cool, fun place for, you know, the family and all. Yeah, I realize, that, you know, if you're taking a family of four or whatever, it's probably a $1,000 a day. But, you know, okay, if you do it once a year. Or not even, you know, that's fine. Good for you. Now, yeah. I remember when I had children. I mean, I still have them. We didn't. Of course. We, you didn't, did. give, we didn't give them away or anything. Yeah, right. When you but had when, young children in yeah, the house. That, thank yes. you, Bill. Yes. But when I had young children, and, you know, me, I'm always, you know, I'm, I've always been kind of a tightwad. I, I can't help it. I just have. Uh, you and I share that. That's okay. I, I would get there when the gates opened. Right. And by golly, we wouldn't open till the gates closed at night. Of course, I, I was a hell of a lot younger. I could walk 10,000 steps in a day without, you know, croaking over. Right. But, I mean, that's what we did. We were there when it opened, and we walked out when it closed. I And I, I am sure, not sure, but, I mean, I would guess – that that's the way most people are because like you, like I just said, like you said, whatever, it's like, okay, we only get to do this once every five years or whatever. And we're spending a boatload of money and we're going to squeeze every drop out of this orange. So yeah, I get it. Now, I don't fine. think they do it anymore, but do you remember those Disney DJ days? Oh my God. Do I remember Disney DJ? Radio days, radio, disc jockey, whatever, DJ. Day. Yes, that's, I mean, that was, th th those were the time, it, for those who don't know, Disney back in the day, and I don't know if they do it or not anymore, but when they- Nowadays, first, I think you have to spend, you had to send like a letterhead. Right. And stating, you know. Right. And now they only give you two, two tickets. Okay. And that's fine. I mean, I- So if have, you have a family of three or four- Then you're paying. I get it. You're still going to pay- but I remember back in the day, right? You hey, you, work in the, you work in the radio business in Florida. This day here in Disney is open, free. Come on down. Just bring your ID or whatever you know to prove yeah. you work for a radio station. And yeah, come on in. It was awesome. It was and they awesome. Had, and, and they had and they usually like were like you know a, a Friday through Sunday deal. So it was like three days, right? And I think they usually had them twice a year. I think you're right. So, right. you know, I mean, I think every, and what was cool, because every, you know, back in those days, that's when t-shirts were cool from radio stations. And so you'd see all these different radio station t Oh, I know, I know they're going to be one of the DJs. Yep. 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 That was awesome. That really was. Well, and I think I remember being there literally before Epcot Center opened. And one of the DJs, they took us out on the monorail and you got off at the last station that was that they had finished, that they completed. And the guide or whoever was there would be like, look over there, see that big round thing that we're building? That's going to be a new park called Epcot Center. <laughs> I was there for that. That's how long ago it's been. So, and we would ooh and ah, and we would get back on the monorail and ride back to the Magic Kingdom. So, yeah. My coolest story, my coolest story is that um I worked, you know, in radio as you did, but I was the music director for a country station. And they would get these new artists that they would want to showcase. And so Disney had and I think they still have it, a Lyric Street Records, but I don't know if Lyric Streets are and I think they still have a label, but I don't think it's called Lyric Street anymore. Hmm. But they had an artist, a new artist that they were wanting to showcase. So they invited all the music directors and program directors and their wives and, you know, their families to, to come to Disney. You had a whole day at Disney that they let you do whatever you want to. And they had a nighttime thing. And believe it or not, we had dinner 
in the uh the what's the mystery is it called the mystery mansion or or what is that oh called? yeah 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 the mansion yeah i know what you're talking about i don't remember so you the know name. the room the room that goes like you know the wallpaper moves and everything like you're going up or you're going down yes they had tables there was there's three of those rooms in case you don't know and they are all intertwined where you can open doors and go to all three of them right tables were set up in there very cool and so we all had dinner together and you know you could you know walk around all you know meet different people from the radio business and this was like nationwide it just wasn't florida djs it was right music, music directors and program directors and that was like the coolest and my daughter she liked that ride anyway but she was at the age then where she was young and that was to her oh my god we we got to eat dinner in the haunted mansion this is like the most awesome thing ever ah, that's and then great. of course the artist came out and you know they took us somewhere right. i think they took us some it was still on property but took us somewhere else and you know then that artist performed that night nice you know, trying to get the radio people excited to play their new album of course of course of course back in the day when real humans played real music <laughs> <laughs> on real radio stations <laughs> and and we can we can close with this i sent you that text the other day and and it was kind of hilarious and kind of funny and 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 it shows what's happened in the world somebody on twitter posted um a little a, a reply that they gave to somebody because it said it was all about what of course we haven't talked about it but there's been some pr crazy stuff happening in the news this week and, and somebody posted on Twitter, in breaking news moments like this, there should be a kind of podcast you can listen to in real time, easily accessible for free. And somebody wrote back and said, <laughs> radio, you're, you're thinking of radio. <laughs> and I'm like, that's how far we've come. We've come so far that people don't even think of live broadcast radio anymore it's all podcast which is scary scary but radio has done that to itself by not having you know yes there's still a few radio stuff yes. i want to go on record the last radio station i worked at has someone there during the week all the way up till 10 o'clock at night overnights right they're automated there's no one there and also during the weekend like from 5 a.m., 6 a.m. all the way till, you know, 8 o'clock at night. They have a, so congratulations. To, I'm going to mention WPCV in Lakeland, Florida. You still hire real live people to sit there and play the music and talk to an audience and keep them informed. Where 99% of the radio stations today, especially on the weekends, nobody there. During the week, hardly nobody there right. it's all either programmed in from somewhere else or it's automated and it runs itself and no one is there so when something like a president candidate gets shot at somebody can jump on the air immediately and tell you the news of the day and what is happening but nowadays the whole world could blow up and you're not going to hear about it till monday if it happens on a friday night because no one's going to come into the damn radio station and inform you that the whole world blew up on Friday night. Ladies Was and gentlemen, the following has been a paid political announcement from B.J. Odom, <laughs> who approved this message. <laughs> but you are so right. I mean, you are absolutely, positively so right with that. And I, 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 I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it ever changes or comes back because these local radio stations seem to have d dug themselves a hole that I don't, I don't know if they've dug themselves a hole. They're in a hole that I don't know that they get out of. I well, don't know. I, I'm at the age where I'll never have to worry about begging for another radio station to, to hire, hire me. You. So I'm right. just going to say it all started back when it was called Clear Channel. Now it's iHeartMedia. When right. I started doing this and, and voice tracking people from other markets into these other markets, it all started with that. And then it filtered down to other radio companies and this is what the world has gotten. There's a few very, because back in the day, 
I don't even care what town you were in. Probably the radio station was a mom and pop radio station. Yes. Even, even in the major markets. Yes. You had an AM, you had an FM. Someone was there 24 seven, unless the AM was a day timer and you had to sign off when the sun went down. I Couldn't worked for one of those. On until the I worked sun for one out. of those in Phoenix. Yep. Oh yeah. We've all worked in one. Oh of those yeah. Things. Oh yeah. An old time radio, but you know, it's, it's a thing has died. You know, it's, radio has killed itself. Rather, it can revive itself. That is all up to radio. And unfortunately, dun, dun, dun. we're too old to, you know, I guess maybe care anymore because we're never going to probably be in the business again. And that's why we do this podcast. We enjoy yep. doing it and we hope our audience yep. enjoys it. Thanks for and, coming, everybody. And Donation plate on your right on the way out. And if you want breaking news, we're not going to be able to give it to you until no. next Wednesday morning That's when right. episode 99 drops. That's it. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. But I hear you. But I get it. I do. I hear you. So, all right. Uh, we could make a whole hour out of that. And maybe that'll be episode 99. Who knows? But right now, it's we got to run. So, 99? awesome. Huh? 99? 99? 99? 99? Oh, yeah. That was. I was thinking Bueller. Bueller. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if you can remember either of those things, you can be our friends. But there you go. All right, everybody, get out there, make it a great week. It's been a it's been a crazy one, but do what you can. Make it make it a good week, and we'll talk to you again for episode ninety nine coming up in a week. So until then, it's just up to my friend BJ Odom to say, see ya. Yeah.